Now a tale of cocaine addiction involving two leading figures in the history of medicine. News Hour health correspondent Betty Ann Bowser has our book conversation. Sigmund Freud and William Halstead were two medical revolutionaries. Freud, the well-known father of psychoanalysis, Halstead, the less well-known father of modern surgery. But just beneath the black and white success, there's another story. Both men shared a blinding addiction to cocaine. In a new book called An Anatomy of Addiction, pediatrician Howard Markell tells how the two tried to ward off self-destruction in the quest for knowledge. We caught up with Markell at Johns Hopkins Hospital in Baltimore, where Halstead conducted some of his greatest work. Dr. Markell, thank you so much for doing this. Thanks for having me. So then what was the connection between Sigmund Freud and William Halstead? Well, they both were contemporaries. They never met, or at least I can't find any evidence, but they were braided, their lives were braided together. They were bound together by a, a fascination with cocaine and several medical papers that some they each wrote and some they read about the latest, newest miracle drug of their era, 1884. So here we are in the medical library of William Halstead at Johns Hopkins University, one of the great medical centers in the world, and he was the first here. What did he do? Most of the modern safety procedures we take of how to cut open a body, how to handle the tissue very delicately and gently so that it heals well, how to suture it correctly. This was all William Halstead. He was also fascinated with aseptic surgery, not introducing germs into the surgical wound. So at this point in medical history, cocaine was found to do what that would allow Halstead to do all these things in surgery and Freud to do all these things with his medicine? Here you had something you could inject or treat or rub on there, and it numbed it to the surgeon's knife. And so Halstead became fascinated with using this deeper and deeper into the body to do all sorts of procedures without putting a patient under. So Halstead got involved with cocaine by experimenting with it in ways to use it in surgery? Yes. Uh, it was very common for many a doctor in the late 19th century and the early 20th century to use themselves as guinea pigs. And no doctor at this time knew of the terrible addictive effects of cocaine. None of this had been figured out yet. And so the first arm to be put out and injected was Halstead's. Did Halstead understand at the time what he was doing to himself? At some point he did. When he still lived in New York and he was literally ruining his career, he stopped going to the operating room, he stopped going to the hospital, he stopped going to medical meetings. In fact, at one point he was called down to the emergency room, bombed on cocaine, and he literally pulled away from the table and said, I can't operate, and walked out, took a cab back to his townhouse, and skittered away the next seven months high on cocaine. Halstead eventually committed himself to an insane asylum in Rhode Island, hoping to be freed of his addiction. But in those days, there was no real treatment, so for the rest of his life, he struggled with the disease. Across the Atlantic and long before psychoanalysis, a young Dr. Freud also believed that cocaine might be his ticket to fame and fortune. One of his closest friends was addicted to morphine, and Freud published journal articles proclaiming cocaine was the cure. But he also had a more personal interest in the drug's effects. Freud loved the way cocaine made him feel. And he uh, was very interested in its psychological components. For one, it did make him feel better when he was sad. He also was amazed at how it made him talk about things endlessly that he thought were locked away in his brain. Sound familiar? That's talk therapy, but without the toxic side effects of cocaine. But he got to like it a little bit too much. Did any of this, the writings, the dreams, the sense of euphoria, all the things that he got from using cocaine, did any of those lead to anything that we now see in psychiatry today? Well, it did. It did. For, to begin with, the idea of talk therapy where you talk freely or free associate from one thing to another may have been inspired by the cocaine unleashing his tongue or his repressed memories. But most importantly, cocaine haunts the pages of the interpretation of dreams. The model dream 
is a cocaine dream, what addiction therapists would call a using dream. He was using cocaine quite a bit in 1895 on himself, to the point he was having chest pain, he was depressed, and he also, his nose was so congested, he had to have a surgeon open it up with a knife so he could breathe. Lots of signs that you might want to lay off the stuff. In the 1890s, after almost killing a patient while under the influence of cocaine, Freud stopped using the drug. It was after that when some of his most famous work was produced. When cocaine was being used by Freud and Halstead at this point in time, did the world look at cocaine as something fantastic, something to be experimented with? How was it viewed? All they saw were the good aspects. No one knew down the road it was very obvious when you had all these addicts that were created and it was overprescribed as was morphine and opium for everything and it wasn't until about five or ten or twenty years later that people started to say hey everybody I know is addicted to this stuff there was no such thing as controlled substances either you did not need a prescription you could just buy it at a drugstore on your own it really outlines a morality play that continues to this day of every blockbuster pharmaceutical agent this drug, when it comes out, is the greatest, the newest, the best. And then as we find out more and more, well, it's not so great, and it has to be used under certain conditions. So would you say, beyond this old story, is a contemporary cautionary tale? Absolutely. It's a, it's a morality play uh, for today as well as yesterday. And that, that's why I, I, I could find all of these issues in their two lives about addiction in general and we have to be very careful because as we're learning more and more about addiction uh, not just one's environment or the drug they use or the route of administration but also one's genetic predisposition so think of it as a wheel of misfortune and as it goes around if you wind up on the bad wedge you could become an addict. Dr. Merkel thank you for being with us.